All right, appraisers, this is Brandon with Choice Valuation, and in this Spark Spotlight video, I'm going to be showing you what exactly Spark will put into your work file when you load data into your Ala Mode report. Okay, so if you are an Ala Mode customer, this video is for you. If you use ClickForms or some other form filling software, you're going to want to watch the related video just for that specific form filler. All right, so let's go ahead and get into it. So as you can see, uh, I've loaded data into this report. I use Spark to get all my, and I use all three sides of Spark. So I used the cost data side for the cost approach. I used the sub, I loaded into my subject, some comps for my sales grid. I loaded in the market conditions analysis as well. So that's all loaded into this report. Now I'm gonna show you what Spark puts into your work file. So all you do if you're an all mode customer is click on this work file tab right here up at the top of total. All right. Now you can see over here on the left, I have a list of all the documents that Spark loaded into my work file. And there's also maybe more documents in here, depending on if you use this yourself. So you may have your own documents scattered about in this as well. Uh, but the first one I'm gonna show you is the property report. Now you can see when I click on that, it shows up over here in this preview window. You can also double click on it and it will open up right into your PDF viewer that you have installed on your computer. If you don't like looking at it in this little preview window. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and look at this. So this is the property report. The first page is a summary of all the properties that Spark loaded into your grid. Second page is a summary map. And then starting on page three is where it kind of gets to some good information. So right here, this is the printout for my subject property. Now I loaded in a listing for my subject property. So it has both MLS data and public records data. And starting right here, you get a full breakdown of the prop, the basic property information. Here you get the MLS characteristics, things that aren't necessarily part of public records. And in, that includes the remarks from the listing agent that were in the actual listing itself. And then down here with property characteristics, you actually get a side-by-side -side view of both the MLS and public records data. And Spark will highlight it in red if there's a discrepancy. So for example, with fireplaces, MLS said there was one fireplace, public records said there was no fireplaces. And then scrolling on down here, you can see we have the entire transfer history of the property. And we also have the mortgage finance history of the property. And then last, we have the listing history of the property. Now this is limited to just the listings that you uploaded to Spark. So if your subject's been listed in, um, in your MLS, you're gonna wanna go ahead and export that, load it into Spark, and Spark will have much more data to go on. And it will also be able to fill out your listing history information accurately in your report. Okay, scrolling on down to the next page, we have essentially two maps of the subject property. One zoomed in all the way, and then one zoomed out a bit, showing the satellite image on top. And also we have Google highlighted in bright yellow any primary traffic arteries. And then starting on the next page, it's basically the exact same thing, but starting with my comp. So this is comp one, and I've got all the same data. It's quite a bit of information. Again, all the MLS and public records data right next to each other. And then the transfer history and mortgage finance history. And then again, the maps for that property. And I can scroll on through and see that data for every single property that Spark loaded in. And as I'm scrolling through this, you'll be able to quickly tell if you have a comp that is abutting to a primary traffic artery, because as you scroll through, it's kind of hard to miss that bright yellow line showing you that it's right next to that um, traffic artery. So that's it. And as I scroll through this, it's just that information for every single comp I loaded in. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the market conditions report. Now, when you're in Spark, you can control all of the analyses that Spark will perform on your market conditions um, and on your sets of data that you uploaded to Spark, I should say. So what you're going to see here is how I have Spark set up for me. It's probably not going to look how, like how you have Spark set up for yourself, um, but let's go ahead and get into it. So the first page here, it'll show you all the data that Spark loaded into your report. So we got the neighborhood one unit housing information, low, high, and predominant, uh, any checkboxes you might have noted for page one the top of page two numbers for a Fannie Mae form or page three if it's a condo. And then we've got the MC information that Spark loaded in. And starting here on page two, we have the basic market characteristics data. And this is done for every set of data you upload to Spark. So I uploaded two sets of data, the competing set and the neighborhood set. So you can see it's done this twice where it gives you the basic information of those listings. And then here you get the actual charts and tables of data. and Keep in mind, when you're in Spark, it, you can have it perform, and by default, it will perform maybe 20 or 30 different sets of analyses, but only six charts will get loaded into your actual report, or maybe it's four um, by default. But you can 
customize that completely on your own. Uh, so, but so four to six charts are going to by default go into your report, but it's doing 20 or 30 analyses. And so in this work file, you're going to get all 20 to 30 or however many analyses you're having Spark perform, not just the charts and tables of data that are going into your report, but all of the data. That way, if you ever needed to go back and defend yourself later, it's all right here for you. So I'll scroll through and you'll be able to see all the information that Spark is putting in, in my case. Okay, so I'm gonna stop going through this and then I'm gonna show you now the, um, the farm list. So many of you may not need or use the farm list, but, it, but if, if you know what a farm list is, you probably do need it. Uh, it's for those of you where you have a client that requires you to load in a document in your report that has essentially all of the competing properties you considered, or oh, I'm, should, I'm sorry, I should start that over, all the properties you consider to be competing with your subject, the ones that were potential comps, not necessarily all of the comps you used, but the ones that, uh, the bigger set of data, the ones that were potential comps. So that's what this is. It's basically a one line report of every listing that was a potential comp. And you can then, just click on this and then click insert as page and then total will insert this document as your farm list into your actual report itself if you want it there all right next let's go ahead and move on to the calculations page this is sort of like a canned commentary document we loaded into every report but essentially it just tells you how exactly spark calculated all of the data for the 1004mc for the neighborhood low, high, and predominant data, and all the regression data, like the the trends and of how much things were going up or down per month as far as your market trends. So that's all in this document. And of course, we reference Fannie Mae and including exactly where in their selling guide. And all those references to Fannie Mae are also italicized where we pull things right out of their selling guide. Uh, so that's that. And I'm going to scroll through here just so you can see the neighborhood calculations section and then also uh, the trend calculations as far as the simple regression. All the formulas are here in case you ever had to go and duplicate the information or replicate it or someone else had to replicate it. All right. And now let's move on to the cost approach. So first, I'm going to show you the cost data report. This is a breakdown of the information for the cost approach for your subject property. So first we have here a replica of the cost approach that was loaded into your form itself, the actual report. And this is in the form of a, a, a regular Fannie Mae form. Uh, so your cost approach, if you're doing a GP form or an AI form might look, might look different than this, but this is the same basic data. Uh, and then if we scroll down here, you can see the cost estimate details. Now, in this case, for this subject property, there was very little information. So I've basically just got the above grade dwelling and the carport information. And so everything on the left is what I typed into Spark or Spark retrieved from the MLS or public records data. And over on the right is the actual cost estimate details for that information. And that's over here. And that's what we get from dwelling cost. And by the way, that's all right here. Dwelling cost is our partner for cost data. So that data comes just straight from them. And then we also have the depreciation information in here. If you noted any in Spark, it will be noted down here as well. Uh, okay, and that's uh, pretty much it as far as the cost data for the subject property. Of course, if you had a, 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 a covered patio or an enclosed patio or a deck or uh, another garage or a swimming pool, that would all be in here as well if your property had that, including the cost estimate details for it. All right, and then the last page here is basically just a breakdown of all the different quality ratings, both for the dwelling itself here, but also for porches, patios, and pools, the different quality ratings are here. And it's all kind of spelled out in layman's terms. And this is taken straight from Dwelling Cost website in case you ever had to defend why you chose the quality rating of whatever you chose, 3.5, say. You could just come in here and this is the sentence describing exactly what that means. Uh, okay, so that's pretty much it. Now, last, what I'm gonna show you is the site value report. Now, this is where Spark will actually help you with your opinion of value for your uh, site value for your subject using either extraction or the allocation method. So in this case for the work file, I used both methods, both site extraction and allocation. So the first thing it does is it shows you in this PDF what you said the a final opinion of site value was for your subject property. And now Spark will never tell you what this number is. It's always left up to you to tell Spark or at least put into your report what you think the site value is. Spark 
doesn't know. It will give you the data from extraction and allocation and let you decide though. Uh, okay, so that's that. And then here's the little uh, the site extraction widget that we show you inside of Spark where you get to choose what, based on site extraction, your uh, opinion of site value would be. And then it has all the actual calculations for extraction, including the site values and the adjusted site values over here. And here's uh, some comments on all of that and how it was calculated, including the regression equations, if you want it. And then here, the same thing, but for allocation and all the allocation data, uh, the equations for that for regression. And then lastly, down here, we have the complete cost breakdown for every comp you used for site extraction, because essentially site extraction is running the cost approach on other properties other than your subject to extract the site value. And so this is the complete site extraction data for comp one or property one, and then comp two and three and four and so on until however many you ran. I ran it on six in this case. And then last, we have the same breakdown I already showed you, which is the quality ratings and what they mean, both for patios, porches, pools, and for the dwelling itself. Okay, that's it. This video got a little bit long. Uh, time got away from me yet again. I uh, hope it was worth it for you to see everything Spark can load into your report. And as always, if you have any questions, you can contact us. Our contact information is right on the Spark website. I'm going to pull that up right now for you. All right, here it is. You just click the gear icon when you're in Spark, and then you click Contact Us, and you will get our phone number and our email address. All right, thanks so much for watching.